The Discovery, Chapter 4, Part 3 Yes, your highness, I'll keep my report brief and simple. David crash-landed on the far side of Canterlot Mountain. He was badly wounded in the landing, and I was able to save him with some... techniques that I've acquired over my time as a medic in the Royal Guard. As the acting director of special affairs for the Night Guard, I felt it pertinent that I act and save him, even if he doesn't exactly fall under my jurisdiction. Midnight began. Wait, she's the director of the what now? I had no time to pass him off to some pony else. I was going to report him to you yesterday morning, but when the Royal Guard arrived at my doorstep, I tried to get them to leave to avoid an incident. As you already know, David was attacked by Sergeant Stone when he thought that he was attacking me. Allow me to clarify that part. David awoke a lot earlier than I was expecting, and he startled me. I, uh, ran away and hit a wall, got a concussion, and could barely walk straight. David was checking on me to see if I was okay. He showed compassion for another species that he knew almost nothing about. Not only that, but when he was literally chased to the edge of a cliff, he did not try to kill any of the Royal Guard, attempting to subdue him. After a careful study of his anatomy while he was recovering, we've determined that he is indeed a carnivore. Or at least an omnivore, and could very easily have done a lot more damage than destroying a little blood when he bit Lieutenant Duster. Oh, she's putting in a good word for me. Thanks, Min- Wait. What, did, what does that mean, careful study? Did, did she look at my- No, 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 she wouldn't have. David was torn from his thoughts when Midnight continued. In addition, we've determined that he is in fact male, and despite the obvious differences, his skeletal structure is very much the same as ours. Only, as you can clearly see, he is bipedal. She did. She totally did. God damn it. David fiercely blushed from the total violation of his privacy. As such, it is in my personal opinion that should he want to, David should be allowed to stay in Equestria. He poses no more of a threat to our way of life than a griffin. Midnight finished with a bright smile on her face. <sighs> well, so much for not looking weak in front of them. <laughs> First human to land here and I get my junk inspected, get my ass kicked by 20 tiny guard dudes, and the leaders of this nation got to hear it all right in front of me. Wait, did she say griffin? I see. Thank you, Midnight. Celestia said before turning to David. David, I would like to offer you a formal apology on behalf of all of Equestria for how Sergeant Stone attacked you. Please understand that the Royal Guard is trained to use increasing levels of force when confronted with a situation like that. And Sergeant Stone should have tried verbal communication first before jumping straight to lethal means. I understand that you are very upset over what happened, rightfully so. But I hope that you can forgive us one day. Celestia finished with a bow of her head. David was hesitant to respond. He took a few minutes to think over Celestia's words before finally finding some himself. I understand why he did what he did, and if I was in his situation and saw some alien thing hunched over a defenseless civilian, I probably would have reacted the same way. I can't say I'll forgive him, not yet, but thank you, I appreciate that. David said as the last of his blush faded away. I understand, and I appreciate the sincerity of your words. Now David, as for those questions I asked earlier, would you be so kind as to answer them? Celestia asked. David took a deep breath and began slowly. Oh, okay, that's a long story, but uh, first off, I just want to clarify that while I do eat meat, I would never eat anything sapient, so you don't have to worry about that. I could also just eat vegetables if the meat thing makes anyone uncomfortable. At the princess's understanding nod, David continued. Anyways, uh, alright, this may seem a little too fantastical to be true, but I, I swear every word is the truth. David paused again, waiting for any other princesses to give him a sign to continue. All four princesses nodded their heads in a silent bid for him to proceed. Sighing, David began his explanation. Okay, a long time ago my race developed the technology to travel across space. It's kind of amazing to think about, but we made the technology to travel from our galaxy to our nearest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda. The thing is, the journey takes a hundred years one way. Due to this time gap, companies started popping up, offering massive payrolls to anyone willing to make the journey to a new colony, Horizon 5. I joined a newly formed intergalactic company named Nebula as a security guard. It was a simple job. I just rode along Andromeda, and once we got there, I made sure no one stole anything while the guys offloaded the cargo and settlers. We were on our way back to Earth when something hit our ship. David trailed off. A solemn look adorned his face. Gone was the blush of an extremely embarrassed man, and in his place was a look of sadness. There was a tremble in his lips, and his vision became blurry. All ponies in the room noticed the pause in his story and the sad look on his face. 
Blinking back the tears, David continued. I was the only survivor. I, I barely made it to the escape pod in time, and, and the rest of the crew died on the ship. David finished as a shiver forced his way down his spine, and his palms dampened with sweat. Midnight couldn't help but feel like there was something David wasn't saying about the crash, although whether she would ever hear it or not depended on him. As he was now, there was enough painful memories floating around. She found it best to leave them for later. I'm so sorry to hear that. It's tragic that they didn't survive. You have my condolences. Celestia spoke softly. Her words were soothing and healing where no bandage could ever reach. Thank you. I just wish that I had done more. David trailed off. The room grew quiet for a while, everyone taking a unanimous moment of silence for the lost crew members. Luna was the next to speak. We are all deeply sorry for your loss. If you would like some time before we continue, that would be perfectly understandable. Uh, thank you, Princess, but I I'm alright. What was the next question again? Is there any way for you to return home? Luna asked. David looked solemnly at the navy blue mare, taking several seconds before answering. No, the distress beacon will take over 50 years to reach either Earth or Horizon 5, and another hundred or so before anyone comes to retrieve it. I'll be long dead by the time someone arrives. I thought that you said that you have already traveled 100 years one way. How old are you exactly? Luna asked, a confused expression adorning her face. I was only able to travel for that long due to the cryopods in the ship. They basically freeze a person while pumping the necessary nutrients and oxygen into the body to keep them alive while preserving them for centuries. If I remember right, the colony had just been set up when we left. 100 years one way, then we only made it 42 back. And I'm 165 years old. <laughs> I've lived twice as long as most people on Earth ever will. David's face was plastered with a sad smile. Why did you take that job? Didn't you have a family and friends back home? Luna asked, even more confused. Yeah, I, I did. They're all dead now. I... I miss them more than I could ever put into words. I, I guess I... David trailed off. I think I speak for all of us when I say that you have our sympathy. You've lost a lot of special p uh, humans in your life. That's not something anyone should ever have to endure alone. Again, if you need some time, we can give you as much as you need. I've sensed much pain and regret in you ever since you arrived. And it is not our intention to bring up memories that pain you so. Luna said with a look of compassion. If you only knew. Thank you, but I'll be alright. It's just... It's just fresh is all. Very well. Please continue. Luna said, a friendly smile now adorning her face. Well... Where was I? Uh, my father always told me that I would do great things, even though I didn't have much going for me. I spent a couple of years in the military before I was discharged and had nowhere to go. It was around that time that Horizon 5 was discovered and declared ready for settlers to arrive. I guess I figured that the greatest thing I could do was be a part of the new galaxy, a new front for humanity. I guess I figured I would retire once the colony had developed enough and live the rest of my life there. Plus, getting to say that you're hundreds of years older than everyone around you is pretty cool. I see. I understand your intentions, noble as they may have been. Regardless, I am sorry for your loss. Coincidentally, my sister and I know all too well about being centuries older than the ponies around us. We're both well over a thousand years old. Luna said with a hint of sadness in her voice. It's not quite as grand as every pony likes to think. David's expression turned to one of confusion. What? Over a thousand years old? That... No, that, that smells like some bullshit. How the hell could they be that old? Maybe she was being figurative. Might as well roll with it, right? It's not like that's the craziest thing I've seen in the last 48 hours. Well, uh, you both look great? David awkwardly complimented the princesses. Stifling a chuckle, Celestia responded. Thank you very much, David. You look great as well. Especially considering the shape that you arrived in. Regardless, I am truly sorry that you cannot return home. If you would like, we have many different resources that could be used towards finding you a way back. That said, you still are most welcome to stay in Equestria, should you want to. I think, at the moment, I don't really have much of a choice. Not that I'm complaining or anything, your world is beautiful. 
I could have just as easily crashed on a barren wasteland of a planet and died from any number of things. Not to mention the sheer luck of being able to communicate so easily. Well then, it's settled. We've already made a room available for you on the chance that you would say yes. There's just one little catch if you don't mind. Twilight? At that, all eyes fell on the Lavender Pony Princess. She had been silent thus far, and David still couldn't quite place what she thought of him. Thank you, Princess. David, I would understand if you didn't want to, or just wanted more time to yourself to think after everything you've been through, but I have so many questions that I would like to ask you. We would all like to build a profile of sorts on you to help you better fit in, should we not find any way to send you home. If you agree to this condition, it would help us understand you better, and also help you make a life for yourself here. All you need to do is have weekly meetings with me in private and in a comfortable setting, so I could learn more about you. I understand that sitting in front of four princesses in a strange new land must be intimidating, or at least strange, so my hope is that these meetings can be far more casual, and you can more freely express yourself as a friend, not an outsider. Twilight finished, and all eyes fell to David. The silence that filled the room was palpable. No one dared to breathe for fear of missing the human's answer. I would actually love that. God knows I could use some more friends at a time like this. Yes! Twilight burst from her throne, wings spread, and hooves skyward. Everyone in the room was taken aback by her outburst, David nearly tripping backwards from the shock. Realizing what she had just done, Twilight sat down as fast as possible. Her wings retracted and her hooves awkwardly shifted about under the gaze of everyone in the room. Uh, whoops, got a little excited there. The rest of the princesses simultaneously transitioned from shock to laughter, and fell into a fit of giggles. Even Midnight joined in the infectious laughter now filling the room. It wasn't long before even David couldn't keep a snicker contained and chuckled at the display. The entire room enjoyed a refreshingly good laugh at Twilight's expense, after an extremely tense introduction. Finally managing to stifle his chuckling, David was the first to speak over the group of laughing ponies. Well, I'm glad you're so enthusiastic about it. And I'm also excited to get to know you too, princess. Thank you. Hiding her face behind her hooves, Twilight managed a weak and somewhat muffled response. Uh, you're welcome. Celestia was the next to regain control over herself and speak. Oh yes, Twilight, since you're clearly so excited, would you be so kind as to share David his new room? I... okay. Twilight slowly rose and trudged from her throne, trying her best to hold her head high, but the still snickering princesses forced her head to hang just a little. Her ears were splayed back against her skull as her cheeks burned bright crimson. Please follow me. This is so embarrassing. With that, David and Midnight followed Twilight out of her throne room and down the massive hallway, along with the two royal guards standing outside the doorway. Only the three royals were left in the throne room. As the door closed, Celestia, Cadence, and Luna began discussing the events of the past few minutes. So, what did you think of him? Celestia asked. I think he's an adorable stallion that would do very well with the mares. Did you see his tiny nose? Oh my gosh, it's so cute! Plus, he's so exotic. Did you see his hands? They're like a minotaur's, but much softer. Just imagine those digits brushing through your coat, scratching every itch your hoofs can't reach. Not to mention the other places that he could reach with those. If he integrates well enough, he'll have all of Equestria lining up to date him. Cadence replied, wiggling her eyebrows. What about you, Luna? It's tough to say. While yes, he is very easy on the eyes, he seems to be... hiding something. Like he didn't want us to know more about the circumstances of his crash. I'm not saying that he's hostile, but I don't trust him fully yet. I'll need to see his dreams before I can really say. Luna spoke with an almost solemn tone. But you saw the look in his eyes when it was brought up. He's in pain. A lot of pain. He's lost his friends. In his line of work, probably the only friends that he has. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they were the only humans that he ever knew anymore. Are you sure you aren't confusing his pain for deception? Cadence countered. I don't know. We still know so little about his kind. Maybe he's very good at hiding his emotions? <laughs> like I said, I will enter his dreams as often as I can over the next few weeks, and try to decide from there. Celestia spoke, silencing any rebuttal Cadence had prepared. David is a guest in our world. Whether we want him here or not doesn't matter. He's here. From that little talk that we had, I don't believe that he holds any malice or ill intent towards our subjects. However, I must agree with Luna. We still know almost nothing about a species, their social structure, the way they deal with grief, or their history. We only know the small amount David has told us. I believe that in time, Twilight will coax more information out of him. If anything misaligns, we'll confront him for the truth. Okay, that sounds fair, but we can't just keep him locked up in the castle either. If he feels like a prisoner, then he won't tell us anything, and he certainly won't take kindly to that kind of treatment. 
if his response to the Royal Guard yesterday was anything to go off of. Cadence responded. Agreed. David must be free to live on his own. That said, ponies are going to panic if we just let him loose on Equestria. We'll keep him in the castle for a couple of weeks while we spread the word that a friendly alien has come to our world and have the guard monitor him daily. We'll break the news gently and in a controlled manner for the public. Then, he'll need a place to live to build that trust in those relationships. And I think I know just the pony to house him. It's still amazing of how there are many other planets out there and we're still stuck here. Eh, that'll eventually change in time. Probably not in our lifetime, though. Anywho, let's get on to our intergalactic donators. Top donators are 630, J10Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Saru Orion. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Morshid, Omicron Library, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Hudzaza, Riot Soul, Iron Sky, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.